Ho ho ho, first rate tutor, happy Christmas. Mr. Sowles, it's literally the first exams. Where's your Christmas spirit? Ho ho ho. Let's get serious. Now, what we're going to do is focus on Christmas Carol and what our predictions would be based on the past exams that AQA has set out for you as students. So when it comes to making these predictions, it can be a little bit tricky, right, Mr. Sells? Certainly can, especially when you've got no sense of humour. <laughs> so what we're going to do, guys, is begin by going over a Christmas Carol and the past exam questions that came up so that we can kind of see if there's any trends. And then based on those trends, make our own predictions on what we think is going to come up in the exams that start tomorrow. So, when it came to the 2017 exam, what was really interesting based on looking at this is that this is the only question that came up that asked you to focus in on a particular set of characters, which was the Cratchit family. So, you were asked to look at how the Cratchit family's Christmas dinner is presented and discuss how the Cratchit family is used to present the struggles of the poor. Now, mm -hmm. So I love this question, in fact I love all of these questions, because when I get to my prediction, I'm going to argue that they're all exactly the same question. Now, in terms of 2018, I think what was really interesting is now AQA just started broadening out the questions and focusing generally on just themes and ideas. So we were presented with an extract from stage 4, this is when the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come appears, and you were asked to focus initially on how Scrooge's fears are presented, but across the entire novella. So, I think Scrooge is coming up a lot now, isn't he, when, when we look at the later questions. So that's one top tip. You're definitely going to have to revise him. Okay. And for 2019, we were presented with Marley's ghost. He appeared wrapped in chains, and the question asked how the ghosts are used to help Scrooge change his behaviour. Which again is exactly the same question as this one, but you're just mentioning the ghosts who obviously keep showing him stuff in order to give him fears. And so it's really the same question with different wording. And in 2020, we had yet another fairly general question. This was taken from stave three. This is when we see ignorance and want the two children that are presented to Scrooge. And the question focused on how is the suffering of the poor presented, which is actually very similar to the 2017 exam. Exactly, because they're the main poor people in, in the whole novel, so it's really a very similar question. And for 2021, we had Fezziwig's party that was presented in stage two, and the question was still quite general. It was just how joy and happiness is presented, which is a bit of an odd theme. Yeah, I can imagine students panicking, thinking, well, I've never even considered that when I'm writing, uh, doing my revision or my practice essays. But actually, it's the same question, because how do we overcome Scrooge's fears? We teach him the value of joy and happiness. How do we get him to sympathise with the poor? We teach him how he can help them, which therefore brings him joy and happiness in stage five. And so for me, going into the exam tactically, I'm always thinking Scrooge's relationship with the poor, whatever the question is, that's where I'm going, because that's what's underlying the whole novel, really. That's what the novel's about. So I'm going to link that to any question that comes up, no matter what. Okay. And students who were in your position last year were asked to discuss the effects of loneliness and isolation. And this was based on an extract from Stave 2, where Scrooge is in boarding school and he's completely isolated. Brilliant. So for me, again, why is he lonely and isolated? Because he fears poverty. That's why he's chosen this golden idol. I go into all sorts of attachment theory, which you don't have to worry about now, but you can see it in some <laughs> of my videos. Um, but it's his fear of poverty that causes him to cut himself off from other people. And it's again the same question, Scrooge's relationship with the poor. Now, in terms of what you think might come up in the exams, what are your predictions? So it's difficult to predict what the question will be, although it's looking like we haven't had Scrooge himself for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a possibility. But actually, I don't really care about that. I'm going to go and prepare. What does the novel tell me about Scrooge's relationship with poverty? Why was Dickens trying to show that relationship with poverty in this Christmas tale? What did he want to change in society? Once I start writing about what Dickens wants to change in society, then I'm automatically hitting the top of the mark scheme 
And what he wanted to change in society will always be relevant, no matter what the question. Okay. So that's my plan. Okay. Well, I kind of have a slightly different take on this. I personally think that a theme question is certainly going to come up. I think what's interesting based on these past questions, there hasn't been actually an explicit mention of charity or generosity. Oh, yeah, good point. So I think perhaps how charity is presented, how generosity is presented, and perhaps one of the extracts related to, for instance, when the charity men appear to Scrooge and he says, are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Of course, also his words are reiterated back to him in stave three by the ghost of Christmas yet, or ghost of Christmas present with ignorance and want. And of course, in stave five, when Scrooge says and promises to live in the past, present and future, and this is again an allusion to charity. So I personally think yeah. that it's going to be a bit more uh, direct, the question. And I think we haven't seen a charity question. And yes. I think that would be a really interesting one. I think that's a really good call. But again, uh, I would come at it from the point of view of Scrooge's relationship to the poor. You know, that's why we need the charity. So I know in my revision, if I get a theme question I've never thought of, like that one, I'm still going to be able to apply what I've revised. So it's a kind of mindset, really. Okay. And what would be your final tips for students who are kind of panicking at this stage? And what can they do if they have literally less than 24 hours to prepare for this exam? Yeah. Uh, so I would only write a plan. And the plan would be the eight key moments that you would take uh, from the novel that show you the most development in Scrooge. Because the way Scrooge changes will always be relevant wherever we are. Uh, so I plan those. Do them chronologically, because when you do that, you're automatically making a logical argument about why the change happens. That gives you a conceptualised response, which is always at least grade seven. Great. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Happy Christmas, first rate tutor! Let's make a video, come on! Let's do it! <laughs> okay. Do you want to go again? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. Now if you are curious to know what mine and Mr. Sales's predictions are for the upcoming Macbeth exam, make sure you head over to his channel where I'll be going over with him all the past paper questions that came up in the Macbeth exams as well as our predictions for the upcoming Macbeth exams this year.